Hey guys, and welcome back to Z3 Cubing. Today we're going to try and make the worst turning Rubik's Cube possible. So recently I've made a little sequence of videos where I try and make the fastest turning Rubik's Cube possible. Basically when I flick a side like that, I just want it to spin for as long as possible. This was my first attempt, I made a bunch of little modifications and lubed it up a bunch, and I got about a U7 on this cube. This was my second attempt, I got about a U12 on this cube, as you can see it's a lot faster. And in fact if you turn it upside down, you can actually get a D about 50 if you do it well enough. But you guys seem to really enjoy those, and if you haven't seen them yet, I'll leave links down in the description for you to watch those two videos afterwards. Anyway, I figured what's the exact opposite of making a cube turn as fast as possible, and I figured just making it turn as slow as possible, or just as badly as possible. Now this is actually a concept that I've done before in a really old video, but I wanted to do it a lot better today. I want to do it a lot more methodically. I don't want to just dump sand in it like I did in that last video. I want to have a very particular thought process behind the things that I'm doing to make the cube turn terribly. And not only that, but I also want to try out some new innovative methods of making a cube turn awful. Don't worry, in the end we will be getting back to the classic dumping all sorts of cube lubes and all sorts of non-cube lubes into the cube to see how bad it can get. And if that's all you want to see, then go ahead and skip to this point in the video where I start dumping lubes in. But in the meantime, let's go ahead and get started making this cube as bad as possible. Actually, you know what? Before we start, this cube just looks too nice and its color scheme is correct. I think we need to fix that. There we go, that's better. Wrong color scheme and these stickers. I think this was stickered by a non-cuber. Okay, idea number one. Everybody loves magnets in their cubes because they snap together like this. But what if they don't snap together? What if they repel each other like this? There's actually a way to magnetize a cube so that instead of each corner and edge piece pair are attracting each other, they actually repel each other. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the cube apart. I'll just take out an edge and a corner for the sake of example. And this is a chi sail, so it has these weird caps that we have to take off. It's not the easiest to magnetize, but it can be done. And basically what you normally would do when you're magnetizing a cube, you put an edge and a corner together, and what you would do is you put a magnet from this side of the stack on the edges and a magnet from the opposite side of the stack on the corners. That way they'll attract together. But what I want to do is I want them to repel. So I'll just take it from the same side of the stack every single time. That way they'll always face each other and repel. So what I'm going to do is just mark off one side of the stack of magnets. That way I know to never take magnets from that side and always to just do it from this side. And basically what I'm going to do is get a bit of super glue. I'll stick it down inside of the edge right where it needs to go. And then I will take a magnet from this side of the stack and making sure not to swap the direction, just drop it down in there. I might want to nudge it around with something. I'll do the same thing with the other half of the edge as well as all three parts of the corners, and then all the pieces will be repelling each other once the cube is back assembled. So let's go ahead and start with that time lapse. All the magnets are in, time for reassembly. All right, so assembly isn't too much harder than normal, but just looking at the cube, everything just looks a little bit weird. Like these pieces are kind of repelling each other. As you can see, this corner piece is not wanting to go in its spot. But I am really interested to see just what this cube feels like once it's put back together and once you start turning. I imagine, yeah, everything is just kind of offset. It doesn't want to align. So we do a turn. Yeah, that's super awkward. It's like the exact opposite of having magnets. Instead of having it nice and snappy, it just does not want to go there. It just wants to be misaligned. And this cube is actually pretty tight. I guess I will loosen it in a minute here. So yeah, that's probably lessening the effect a little bit, but still, this is incredibly awkward to turn. Just nothing wants to snap into place. That is awesome. Now our next few modifications all have to do with the centerpieces or the hardware, all these screws and springs that are holding the cube together. Now since we're basically gonna be taking the cube entirely apart, unscrewing everything, I figure for the time being we might as well just loosen all these sides up and see what these reverse magnets feel like with a really loose cube. There we go, that's plenty loose. And for good measure, let's just drop a couple drops of really fast lube in here too, DNM37, and just see how crazy it is with these reverse magnets. Oh my gosh, that is terrible. And we've only done one mod to this. Okay, this is gonna be epic. Woo! Okay, like I said, we're now gonna be making some modifications to the center pieces. So the first thing we have to do is take this core apart completely, which means we have to open up each of these center caps and unscrew it. Actually, you know what? The screwdriver is a little bit weak. I think we need to bring in the power tools. This will make it a little bit easier. Just get that on there and... All right, that's a lot faster. Let's go to the next centerpiece and... Oh yeah, that's great. All right, now that we've gotten things completely taken apart, it's now time for a very important step, and that is to lube the core. Of course, there's a lot of friction inside of these centerpieces because of the metal rubbing against metal and rubbing against plastic, so we gotta use some sort of core lube. A lot of people like to use stuff like lube with black, but I say that's overrated. Instead, let's go back to the original cube lube, Vaseline. So let's get this opened up here, and we can just grab a little bit to put inside of our centerpiece right here. Just get that right where the screw will be. In fact, we can never have too much Vaseline. Let's add a little bit more. 
There we go. Just fill up the whole centerpiece, you know? There we go, that's perfect. Now before we just grab our screw and spring again and put them together and put it back into the centerpiece just like they were before, I actually have this really cool trick that'll increase the performance on your cube amazingly. All you have to do is take your spring and instead of putting the screw in like this, you put the screw in 90 degrees away from where it used to be. So it looks a little bit like this once you're done. All you gotta do is put it into the centerpiece like this. There we go, get your spring in there, get your core. So you can see this is our setup, and it turns out this orientation of the spring is actually the optimal orientation for cube performance. Let's screw this in here. Don't worry, it'll get a little bit bent out of shape, but there we go, it's all screwed in. And there we go, perfect elasticity. So now all we gotta do is go around to our other five center pieces, lube them up, do the quick little spring mod, and screw them back in. And then we can assemble the cube and try out the performance. Let's get started. Alrighty, here we go. Not only is our elasticity significantly more awkward and more difficult to pull out, but we also have significantly more friction in the centerpieces because the spring is rubbing against the screw at a very strange angle. So let's get the centerpiece on and we can continue reassembling the cube. And here we go. We can finally try out the turning with the core all lubed up and modified. Considering how much Vaseline is on my fingers, I can imagine there's quite a bit inside the pieces where they're rubbing against each other too. So you can totally still feel those strange magnets, but the biggest difference is definitely in the elasticity. Like it will stretch a little bit if you kind of pull on it, but it definitely is a lot stiffer. And just the turning of the side, it feels like there's a lot of friction in those center pieces, which is exactly what we want. Everything is feeling more awkward than ever before. So that means it's time to move on to the next step. Now we've already ruined magnets like they put in most modern pyraminxes, but what came before magnets? That's right, ball bearings. And a lot of old pyraminxes, instead of using magnets to attract the pieces together, they have these little ball bearings embedded in the pieces so that you get a bit of a snap. Nowadays, these pyraminxes are just very out of date. They feel just very awkward, but that's exactly what we want in our cube. Now, of course, even if you do have a bunch of ball bearings just lying around, you can't just put them into a three by three like you would have on a pyraminx. You have to have the holes and you have to have springs pushing against them and everything like that. But what you can do is just open up the cube and dump all the ball bearings in. So let's go ahead and do that. Get some ball bearings in there. There we go, just drop them all in. And there we go. Now not only will the cube feel really annoying to turn, but it'll also sound really annoying when you're just shaking it like this. And actually I did change my mind. Instead of just having the ball bearings in there, I will actually add the springs to make them fully functional. I have some springs right here. Let's just uh, dump these in. More springs is more gooder, right? Oh boy, imagine just randomly turning your cube and then a spring falls out between the pieces. This is gonna be fun, oh. Oh man, oh I can feel the springs in the turning, okay. Uh, the other side has lots of ball bearings. Ooh, it's like a crunchy, like almost sandy kind of feel to it, but without any sand. This is wonderful, and you get some spring noise added in too. Wow, I love this. All right, it's finally that time that you've all been waiting for, dumping in random lubes to see what happens. But before we do that, I just want to take a second to appreciate how terrible we've gotten this cube to be without putting any lube in it. For those of you who skipped ahead to this point in the video, you're really missing out. You should go back and watch it because this is awful. And so far we've only lubed the core, no lube in the pieces at all. So first I'm gonna do something pretty reasonable that I'll actually probably make the cube turn a little bit better. I'm basically just gonna do my standard lubrication on a cube minus the lubrical black that I normally put in the core. So that means a little bit of weight too in the pieces as well as lubrical silk, which is probably my favorite cube lubricant. So let's get some of this in the pieces. Of course, we don't have to worry about how much we put in. That's probably plenty. And we'll get some lubrical silk out and drop a bit of that in too. Or, you know, a few drops. There we go, there's like five. And now we can start turning that side. Oh my gosh, I forgot how bad this was already. Uh, let's just scramble it up. And yeah, I think it's actually a little bit better. Nice and smooth, all that silicone, all that lubrical silk. All right, so time to move on to the next lube. Let's try out this one right here, Max Fleet. This will actually make your cube super duper fast. So let's put some of this in. Comes out in this really weird strand, but it's actually a really nice lube. Let's put some in on that side. Put some in on the other side. And oh my gosh, that's fast. Okay, uh, some of it's kind of sticking out of the cube. I guess we used a little bit too much. Yeah, I like it, it's fast. Okay, uh, what just happened? Uh, it's kind of stuck. I think it's stuck on a spring inside of there. Yeah, I can see the spring down there. Ah, uh, there we go, that's better. Okay, for our next lube, let's try out Lubical Black. Now this of course is a good core lube that I use in the hardware and a lot of my mains, but I mean, we have hardware springs just lying around inside of the cube, so why not add some inside the pieces? Let's just get some to come out. There we go. Oops, got a little on the sticker. It kind of stains your hands and stuff, so you gotta be careful. Let's wipe that off real carefully. And yeah, 
feels similar to before, maybe a little bit slower. I think the biggest difference after that one is just the black stains I got on a bunch of the stickers. Oops. So now I think it's time to move on to some more creative lubricants. This first one though is something that you would use in cubes. If it were the year like 2010, those of you cubers who have been around a while will probably remember this stuff, CRC silicone. Basically people would use it in like Rubik's brains and stuff. The best way was actually to take the cube apart and just spray the pieces, wait for it to dry and then assemble it back together. But we don't have time for that. Let's just spray it right into the cube. I actually have pretty much a full bottle of this. I used to use this to lubricate like all my Rubik's brain cubes and I ran out of it one day and I got a new bottle and I've hardly even used it since. So let's just put it in a bunch of places on the cube. There we go, that's plenty. And it can kind of mess up the pieces if you don't turn it quick enough, but I think we can get this turning. Oh my gosh, I think it actually got better. Whoa, okay. I mean, it still is pretty terrible, but I don't know, it's just a lot more slippery. Wow, I think we improved it, that's nice. Now let's try one of the more common suggestions I used to get on my videos all the time for what to lube a cube with. That is WD-40, so let's get this open here and just spray a little bit in, just like we did before. There we go, got a little, oh man, that comes out quick. There we go, ooh, bubbly, cool. There we go, got it in all sides, and just turn the cube now. Um, that's interesting, oh, oh, oh no, that's bad, okay. Uh, that does not react with plastic super well. I don't know, it makes it feel just like slow and just, just bad. Wow, okay, that's weird. You know, while we're still trying all these lubes and like spray cans, let's try this stuff out. Try it. Ooh, that's actually, that's actually really nice. I'm kidding, it's compressed air. All right, I think the worst one so far has to be WD-40. I don't think it really did much at all to the turning, but it just kind of went everywhere. It didn't stay inside the cube. It got all over the pieces, all over my hands. It kind of smells bad. I don't know, it's just kind of everywhere. Anyway, I think for our very last lube, we gotta go with something that's appropriate for the times. But first, just take a look at how disgusting the inside of that cube is. Oh my gosh, there's just so much disgusting lube. I think we gotta sanitize the inside of this with some hand sanitizer. That's right, just pump it in here. There we go. All right, I kinda shook it in, let it settle a little bit. Let's add a little bit more just until it's totally full, totally sanitized. And there we go, we can put our last piece back in and we can try it out. I imagine this is gonna come out of the pieces and smell very alcoholy. Um, eh, it's actually not that bad. Wouldn't recommend leaving your cube with hand sanitizer, but it's not that bad compared to all the stuff that we put in it so far. Actually, this is too good to end the video with. I think we gotta add more Vaseline. Yeah, this is, this is the solution. Lots of Vaseline inside of the pieces. There we go, get in there and turn. Oh yeah, that's better. All right, I think we're ready to do a quick solve and finish off the video. I gotta say though, without literally putting like sand inside of the cube, although I guess this amount of Vaseline is pretty dang close to sand, and without uh, just like tightening the cube, which I basically did in my last worst cube ever video, which of course tightening the cube like crazy will just make it turn terribly. This cube is actually pretty loose right now, yet it still manages to be pretty much completely awful. And yeah, I gotta say, this is a pretty nice result. I'm pretty happy with this, if we can do this OLL. Uh, yeah, maybe I should have made a little bit more of an effort to get the Vaseline on the inside of the cube rather than the outside, but yeah. Pretty awful cube, pretty awful looking and turning and feeling and smelling cube. I hope you guys enjoyed. I think we succeeded in this video and I'll see you guys next time.